in uh, uh, in a press case flow bypass the normal humidification of upper airway and expose the lower airway to dry uh, uh, and room temperature gases so external humidifiers compa uh, compensate for the lack of natural humidification mechanism with the upper when the upper airway is passed in my introduction there are two kind of uh, humidification which device which rapidly evolved one is active uh, humidifiers and the second is passive it is a kind of sophisticated system composed of freezer boiler heating devices and other elements that has become the part of our usual uh, use in nscc and, and in intensive care units therefore the basic knowledge of mechanism of action of each of these devices as well as their advantage and disadvantage become a necessity for anesthesiologists and intensive so first of all, before uh, knowing uh, going through all the mechanism we need to have some humidification technology which will define what is the humidification what is the relative humidification humidity what is the absolute humidity so absolute uh, humidity defined as uh, defined as number of s2 molecules in a liter of gas uh, absolute uh, humidification at 37 degree temperature is supposed to be around 44 milli uh, it's uh, milli per liter while the relative humidity defined as number of s2 molecules in a given uh, uh, at given temperature of the gas suppose uh, this is the uh, this is my second uh, figure suggest that when one liter if the relative humidity is 50% at 37 degree the relative humidity is around 22 milli, milli bar and the third one is the dew point when the temperature where the gas of uh, is 100% or the relative humidity below this temperature water vapors will condense these are the just the, the reminder about which we are going to discuss the uh, our in our body system the mucociliary uh, transport system act is a, uh, like a different system that protect against the pathogens and contaminants ensuring secretion plans and protect the lungs from infection our body has a naturally heat humidity inspired gas in the normal awake patient this are this is understand about the normal awake patient when we inhale the gas uh, at a room temperature the relative humidity is around 7 mg per liter when it reaches to the nasal uh, nasal pharynx the temperature goes up to around 31 degree and the relative humidity is also around 31 degree mill when when it comes again to the oropharynx the temperature again goes down to 27 uh, degree and the relative humidity is around 20 milli per liter is around 75% of relative humidity when it reaches trachea below the carina the isothermic saturation boundary reaches where the, at the 37 degree centigrade the relative humidity is around 100% that is around uh, at uh, around 44 milli this is around 44 mm liter per liter when we intubate the patient there is a natural physiological gas condensing system is bypassed this bypass humidification system index and, and it's also impair the cough reflexes that lead to further uh, uh, inaccurate humidity then lead to its secretion clearance complications lack like draining and thickening of secretions reduce of mucociliary clearance secretion retention obstruction of endotracheal tube or tracheostomy tube compromised airway defense systems and compromised ventilation which lead to atelectasis and various kind of infections which we your uh, daily face in icu setting now the physiology of this uh, heat and moisture exchange is one of the most important functions of the respiratory system the connective tissue of the nose is rich in vascular system and th and thin wall veins this is responsible for warming the inspired air 
to increase its humidity and carrying capacity. After inter uh, tackle intubation, the upper airway will lose its capacity to provide a heat and moisture to the inhaled gas. This then its burden of lower respiratory tract increases, mm -hmm. and it is not well -pre prepared for mitigation process. So, delivery of partial or cold or dry medical gases and this lead to potential damage of respiratory epithelium and which lead to work of breathing, atelectasis, thick and dehydrated, uh, thick, thick secretions, cough, and various kinds of infections. And while during exhalation uh, process, the expired gas transfer heat back to the upper airway mucosa. As the upper airway temperature decreases, so the capacity of to hold the water is also decreases. Therefore, con they condense water and is reabsorbed by the mucosa, recovering its hydration. This this kind of uh, uh, pro pro problems uh, lead to uh, so uh, this kind of problem uh, when we uh, uh, see in assisted ventilation patient. So we have uh, some artificial airway humidification advantage which prevent the seizure damage and reduce the dry secretion and is also helpful in microbiological filtration. Basically, humidifier are the devices that add the molecules of water to gas, classified as two types kind of it is. First is active humidifier, that is presence of external source of heat and water. Second is passive humidifier, this will utilize the patient's own temperature and hydration to achieve the humidification. Now the active humidifier is acts by allowing the air passage inside a heated water reservoir and add water to gas by passing the gas over the water stem to a saturated brick, bubbling it to the water or mixing it with or mixing it with vaporized water. Unlike passive humidifier, they do not have the filters of, of the respiratory gas. And this the active humidifier is kind of two kinds of active humidifier. First is heat and second is unheated. Now we will discuss various kind of uh, humidifier. This is a heat, heated humidifier, which we, we use to in, in ventilator setting. In, it, in, Setting. It incorporates a device to warm the water in the humidifier. Some also heat as inspiratory tube. Humidification chambers, it also contains the liquid water and disposable reusable clear uh, things which we need to uh, through which the this uh, humidified gases are humidified and delivered to patients. Now the heated humidifier is a source uh, hot plate of elements sits at the bottom of the humidifier and wrapped around the elements surrounded the humidifier. Close collar elements sit between the reservoir and outlet. Immense heat inside the water and heat to wire. Or this is the kind of thing. Here is the gas source which uh, delivers in a heated humidifier and then from this distal uh, end of the patient uh, end, the outlet of temperature is around 50 degrees with relative humidity 100%. When it passes through this uh, uh, to it condense and at the time of delivery to the patient, uh, delivery to the patient, the temperature goes uh, around 33, reduced to 37 degree and relative humidity is 100 percent. And this is the ideal uh, delivery of uh, humidified gases to the patient that protect the patient's lung compliance. So this is effective. It depicts the uh, role of active humidity, uh, heated humidifier. In a heated humidifier, we have a temperature monitor to measure the gas temperature at patient end of breathing system. These are two kinds of. First is thermostate. In thermostate, automatically regulate the power of heating element in response to temperature sensed by the probe, which is nearer to the patient connection. And second is non servo control unit. It provides the power to the heated element according to the setting of control, irrespective of delivered temperature.
control most allow for temperature selection at the end of delivery tube at the humidification thermal outlet this alarm is there is a set of alarm which indicates the temperature deviation by the fixed amount displacement of temperature probe disconnection of heat wire low water level in humidification chamber and lack of gas flow in circuit this is a heat uh, uh, picture heat event trial with where we see the temperature from here the gas condensed and then deliver to patient This is the second uh, picture which stated is mid-fired with heated wire inside the inspiratory limb. This, this is the expiratory ex limb circuit. This is the inspiratory limb circuit. And then from there, the water condensed and then get an, uh, and for, uh, it delivers at an optimal humidification temperature, which is required for the lens protection strategy. Now the second is an unheated humidifier. It is a disposable bubble through device used to increase the humidity in oxygen supply to the patient by face mask or nasal cannula. It simply contains the distilled water through the which the oxygen pass and get humidified. The maximum humidity that can be achieved is around 9 milligram S2 per liter. This is unheated. Humidifier, which we use in a recovery units and sometimes in our in our patients. Now the patient passive humidifiers. These are the simplest design and heat moisture exchangers. It also called as condenser humidifiers, Swedish nose nose humidifier, regenerative humidifier, vapor condenser. This is HM, which we use in a our OTN IC setup in a regular basis. This passive uh, humidifier is the ex exchanging mechanism medium enclosed in plastic housing, very size safe, a dead space, and new natal HME with low dead space are available. It may have a port to adjust to gas sampling line for respiratory gas monitoring. This is placed between ET tube and breathing circuit. Here, this is a chemi placed between ET tube and ventilator uh, and ventilator tubing. This is a chemi. Here is it associated between tube and ventilator white tubing. Passive humidifier may increase the resistance to the airflow not only during inspiration but also during the expiratory phase. In situation in which the admission of aerosol medication is needed, SMV needed to be removed from the circuit to avoid aerosol deposition in SMV filter. These are some drawbacks of this SMV filter. It may be used in saturation station, may be combined with another source like unheated humidifier, but it should not be used with heated humidifier. And it should be replaced if contaminated with secretions, and it is advisable to change in an every 24 hours. To in it is an uh, indication to increase the inspired heat and humidity during both short and long term ventilation. But not very long, it may be 10 to 12 hours fine. But if you go for a longer term, you have to wait some other humidifier. It is especially useful when transporting intubated patient transport ventilation faculty have no means of humidifying inspired heat. It is used to supply supplemental oxygen to the intubated patient with sub supply blotic airway by connecting to the um, by connecting to the port. Advantage it is inexpensive, easy to use, small, lightweight, silent, do not require water or external energy source, no danger to overhydration, hypothermia, burnout, or electric shock. And disadvantage also include that it can only deliver only to limited humidity. 
in it is insignificant contribution to temperature preservation which is most important in patient in icu patient less effective than active homeopathy especially after incubation lasting for several hours if several days if plan for uh, patient plan for more into a more than 24 hours we could have to go with the active infrared fire passive humidifier and cold or sm is not that much useful it increases the dead space and may necessitate increase in tidal volume which increases the work of breathing these are the some draw back of uh, this uh, passive humidifier this is various kind pleated electrostatic filters now that it comes to active atm it it is certain device and active heated water source can be added to atm and converting them to passive to active increasing their humidification capacity if the external source of water run out these device will still by the passive uh, atm uh, this is a very model like this is like a booster this is the uh, as active atm source atm is yes atm booster second is performer third is human heated and it the disadvantage is placing a heat source near the patient and higher dead space than the passive so it also increases the passive uh, dead space which is when it used with passive now the clinical ar arc clinical practice guideline the following recommendations are made for following the grading or recommendation assessment development and evaluation this is great scoring system new defecation is recommended for every person receiving invasive mechanical ventilation active humidification is suggested for non invasive mechanical ventilation as it may improve the outcome but when providing active humidification to patient who are invasively ventilated it is suggested that the device provide a humidity level between 33 mg s2 per liter and 44 mg s2 per liter a gas temperature between 34 to 41 degree at circuit by point which is relative humidity is around 100% this is the ideal guidelines when when we have to invasive ventilated patient requirement for lung protective mechanism when we provide the passive gas humidification to the patient undergoing invasive mechanical ventilation it is suggested that atm provide a minimum of around 30 and the s2 pollution okay the passive humidification is not recommended for non invasive mechanical ventilation uh, six one is when providing humidification to the patient with a low tidal volume such as when lung protective ventilation strategy which is generally in ards patient hm are not recommended because they contribute additional dead space and which can increase the ventilation requirement and uh, ph2 uh, level so in these conditions uh, we go for uh, heated kind of uh, active uh, this and hm is not recommended in this situation it is suggested that hm are not used as a prevention strategy for ventilation associated pneumonia suppose hme will not going to protect the infection if the patient is for a prolonged or prolonged ventilation so if you if we say if you think hme will protect no i think it is not correct it is a guideline suggesting that hme has no role for as a protective mechanism in uh, ventilator associated pneumonia monitoring of humidifying system the most reliable means so to measure the humidity is by using hygrometer thermometer system however these devices are not always available at bedside for every patient for so for that consequently different surrogate markers have been suggested to monitor the humidification system
The most popular surrogate and are the sequential characteristics, visual observation of condensed condensation in tubing system and requirement of saline installation. Second one is in general volume secretion is directly proportional to the degree of humidification. Excessive humidification will increase the secretion volume and suboptimal humidification will lead to crusting, insufficiency of secretions and decrease the lung compliance. Secretion volume may be altered by administration of aerosol medication, frequency of suctioning and saline insufficiency. There is still no clear consensus about the universal way to assess the immediate adequacy at the time. Humidification performance. SME design and performance set standards are not defined by the are defined by the International Organization for Standardization, that is IFO. According to AARC the guideline, HHS should provide an absolute humidity level between 33 and 244 milligram S2 per liter, whereas S2 should provide a minimum of 30 mg S2 per liter. During any season time and duration of bypass of upper wear is much shorter. Uh, Clement proposed a minimum level of 20 mg S2 per liter sufficient to prevent damage to the tissue bronchial epithelial during 10 hours of mechanical ventilation. Uh, before, uh, beyond that, this is not a uh, protect, uh, have HM has no role in protection the lung uh, protection. Most manufacturers recommended exchanging HME every 24 hours in case of long-term mechanical ventilation. HME are for passive devices that require retention of heat to provide an effective function. They are deemed contraindicated for hypothermic patient with temperature lower than 30. If in a hypothermic patient, HME is contraindicated. So it is a very important point. This HME increases the dead space, which in turn decreases the alveolar ventilation and leads to increase in arterial carbon dioxide tension. Hence, in order to keep the same level of alveolar ventilation, tidal volume has to be increased, exposing the patient for volume induced lung injury. This is the drawback of this HME. In, spon in spontaneously breathing patient, the addition of dead space associated with the enemy may increase the work of breathing, precluding the liberation from mechanical ventilation. Pat and colleagues demonstrated a mean of 70 mm HD decrease in co 2 level in the RDS patient when heated humidifiers were used instead of HM. This is a very important point. This study suggests that if we use in a, a heated humidifier instead of uh, normal HME, we Able to reduce the uh, 70, 70 mm HD of the pre feature to level, which is very important in this kind of case. We broadly at all suggest that although dead space added by HME may be traveled, it may adversely affect weaning process in patients with limited respiratory disease. In addition to the dead space, HME in increase the inspiratory and expiratory resistance, which contributes to development of intrinsic peak. The message to which is this study shows that airway humidification represents a key intervention in mechanical ventilation for test patients. Inappropriate humidifiers, set settings or selection of device may negatively impact the clinical outcome of them or damaging of airway mucosa, prolonging the mechanical ventilation or increasing the work of injury. So, inappropriate selection of humidifier has a, a very uh, important role in the patient outcome, particularly in a clinical uh, ICU physical patient.
Depending upon the clinical scenario, we require selection being changed over time. Therefore, knowledge of advantage and disadvantage of each of these is devices very much important for every clinician, particularly working in ICU environment. Patient outcome depends upon the optimal humidity and optimize this. The, the, uh, this uh, humidity has a very important role in restoring the lung compliance uh, and restoring the mucosilicity transport system, which uh, if the transport system, mucosilicity system is, is still working in this kind of patient, in, it, there they increase the pathogen clearance and reduce the pathogen replication size because the secretion is not uh, pulled up and it is being removed on regular basis. These are the pictures which suggest that if the patient, uh, it, what is the picture of lung ancillary, uh, lung compliance and retention of mucosal system action? If it is a 100% humidity, the lung compliance better, the clearance of secretions is clear. But if it is in the same scenario, if it's 90% humidity for 15%, 15 minutes, the, the lung compliance is grossly reduced. There will be pulling of secretions and this is further deteriorate the country patient solution. This is the picture which gives a clear indication is the role of absolute humidity in clear and secretions. Uh, if uh, the humidity is uh, less, there will be a Chances of cell damage, severe stop functioning, clear stop, further increase the risk of infection and the condition of patient will further deteriorate. Now there is a comparison between heated humidification versus HME. Heated humidification can deliver optimal humidity. That is around 37 degrees, 44 and milligram per liter, with no contraindication. HME, HME are limited in humidity out and by contraindication. Benefits of heated humidification compared with HME, it maintains the patient airway and reduces the risk of artificial airway obstruction, reduces inspiratory effect and work of breathing, enables reduction of uh, PA CO2 level. Enable the use of lung protective ventilation strategy, may reduce pressure support requirement and does not increase the risk of that if we compare with HIV. This is a one study which suggests that if the patient is ventilated for more than five days, the chances of that is increased to around 40% in HIV patients, while if we use a heated humidifier. The, the chances is around 10 to 15 percent, which is quite less. So we have to be very selective when we plan for patient ventilation. And because it all depends upon the lungs compliance, secretions, and every aspect which further deteriorate the patient's condition. So we have to be very cautious while dealing with human products. Further, Inadequate humidification is also associated to build up secretion on internal walls of the ET2 and small air. ET2 and small airway obstruction increase to airway resistance and can impact on work of breathing, ventilator setting and synchrony, ability to wean and patient transport. So, here we show. The heated humidification system reduces the dead space and resistance to flow of optimized beam. So the beaming with the heated humidifier is quite easy if we compare with HME because this, in that scenario, work of breathing will further increase chances of chronic respiratory failure in patients with chronic respiratory failures and chances of infection also increase. The lung compliance will further reduce the tension. Heat 
these is the optimal humidity. It also preserves mucus integrity, facilitate mucus clearance, promote effective gas exchange and ventilation, and encourage patient air reduce ET occlusion. Does not there will be less chances of bad and enable the lungs protective mechanism which further add in ventilation period. So, ARCC clinical practice guidelines further suggest humidification is recommended in all in every patient receiving invasive ventilation. Active humidification is suggested for non invasive mechanical ventilation as it may improve the adherence and comfort. Passive humidification is not recommended for non invasive mechanical ventilation because it contributes to additional dead space which can increase the ventilation requirement in, and increase the pH level. And we also have discussed as earlier in this uh, topic. So, ERS and ATS practice guideline favors the routine use of humidification with heated humidifier during NIV with possible exception of those patients who request it for only for few hours or less. Otherwise, we have to go with uh, uh, heated humidifier that will help and protect the lung. Uh, uh, this is in conclude our uh, presentation. The, uh, uh, now uh, I hand over to the, the Dr. Samin to have some light on this topic. Hello. Sir, you are muted, sir. Hello. Yes. Yes. Okay. Am I audible now? Yes. yes. You are audible. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Manoj, for this really informative presentation. Uh, you have very well explained all types of humidification, active, passive, bubble, and everything. And very well highlighted the physics attack involved, which we rarely feel because it is so obvious. You know, sometimes it is just important to reemphasize on things which are so obvious. And you have very well enumerated everything involved in uh, this humidification. I would just uh, highlight one small thing again with a couple of studies he has pointed out. One is by Laurent et al., which uh, he pointed out the incidence of VAP, it has clearly shown diminish in incidence of GPCs, GNBs, endogenous VAP, everything. Uh, the one Dr. Manoj presented with a ventilation involved more than five days. The incidence of all ventilator associated pneumonias were significantly lower when we use active humidification instead of the one uh, with HMEs. And the second which he mentioned is a landmark grade scoring by American Association of Respiratory Care. You know, this, this guidelines came after 10 articles and 184 clinical trials over a span of 21 years. So you can well imagine the work they have done before they brought these guidelines out. Yes, class 1A indication, as he rightly pointed out, humidification is a must in every invasive ventilated patient. And class 2B, where active humidification is suggested for non-invasive ventilation also. I think one is all these things, definitely what uh, we have seen, HMEs, are uh, okay to restore where the ventilation time is significantly less. But once we feel that active ventilation is required for longer period, and second, when we feel when that we the non-invasive ventilation is to be carried out for a longer period, at that time we need active humidification. And ordinary HMEs may not be able to cope up with that. Uh, I think uh, to bring it all together, let me conclude by saying one thing. Clinical data, all this which has been presented by us, is on one side. 
but practically experiencing when we extubate a patient after four or five days of mechanical ventilation and especially in our non invasively ventilated patients on bipap and all most of our patients we say that they are experiencing dryness pain in throat for so long and their never ending thirst you know all this just i think is enough to reemphasize the need of ventilation at uh, the need of humidification in artificially ventilated patients uh i thank you uh, for listening to both of us and over to himanshu thank you sir thank you so much so with this uh, i would like to thank our guest dr samir arora and dr manoj shukla on the behalf of all the participants for taking time from their busy, uh, busy schedule and share your experience of heated humidification in assisted ventilation sir your presence and wise words will surely help our participants in the best possible way i look forward to our next webinar session soon wishing you all the best for your future endeavors and have a good night thank you so much thank you